Hi, it seems like my review of the FixHub uh, portable USB uh, soldering station here caused a little bit of uh, stir. Um, it turns out maybe 3% of you, uh, based on the actual, uh, you know, thumbs down, thumbs up ratio um, of the video, compared to, as a reference, um, this quick uh, TS11, which was my uh, previous video. I reviewed this one and I reviewed this one. I gave the iFixit a thumbs up and I gave the quick TS11 a thumbs down. And a lot of people actually uh, said, hey, hang on a minute, what's going on here? If you gave this a thumbs down, this had issues as well. Why are you giving this one a thumbs up? And okay, fair enough. And I thought it was fairly obvious and I thought I showed a lot of stuff in the video that uh, explained that. But apparently, yeah, about maybe about 3% of you based on the thumbs down, like the back end thumbs down that I actually see, like the real thumbs down. 3% um, uh, of people gave uh, this video a thumbs down uh, compared to this video as a reference. So, so it looks like a small percentage of you didn't quite understand um, what I was getting at with what I'm getting at with these reviews and how I rate them and etc. So yeah, let's talk about it. Now, uh, what, there were a lot of comments that were uh, quite similar, but the best comment uh, came from American Locomotive One, and I've put that up uh, here overlay along with my uh, response to that. Now you can pause the video now and you can read uh, my response to that if you uh, want, but I'm basically going to go through it here and then stick around at the end. I'm going to do some um, extra um, thermal capacity tests between various irons just to show you uh, what's what. But uh, anyway, that's just a bonus. Stick around for that. So one of the main complaints is that uh, both of these irons had thermal capacity issues compared to their claimed ratings. This one claims to be 80 watts um, and this one claims to be 100 watts and I in experiments in both of them, um, basically both of them did not meet their claimed uh, rated thermal capacity. And I actually pointed this out extensively in the iFixit video. In fact, I went to a lot of effort to actually show and do various tests to show that uh, this didn't meet its rated um, 100 watt capacity. Yet a few uh, commenters seem to uh, claim that, oh, I'm shilling for the company, I'm biased, I'm, I'm not uh, being objective and everything else. Well, if that was the case, then I would not have gone to the effort to do those tests and actually include them in the video. So my whole idea of doing review videos is that I unbox it, I look at it, you know, the look and feel of it, and then I run various tests and I point out good things and bad things. And I pointed out several uh, issues with the iFixit unit. In fact, I did it in quite extensive detail and multiple times in the video. I even repeated myself multiple times. Yet, People think I'm shilling? I, eh, I don't get it. So American Locomotive uh, commented and others uh, commented that, well, if this had, um, you know, a lot of issues and this had issues, especially in regards to uh, thermal uh, capacity, why did it get a thumbs up and why did this get a thumbs down? It comes down to basic expectations of these irons. And I didn't think I had to explain this, but it looks like I might have to. Um, this is a bench soldering iron. I have specific expectations in mind for a bench. So just ig ignoring price, okay? I have specific expectations for a bench soldering iron and I have specific expectations for a portable soldering iron. This is not a bench soldering iron. This is a portable soldering iron. In fact, it's in their slogan. It's even etched inside when you look at the uh, teardown, repair is mobile is uh, the slogan, I think that's in there. And it's designed for portable use. So I'm evaluating and ex and setting my expectations based on this being a portable iron. Similar to ones I've reviewed before, like this uh, TS-80, which is my current uh, go-to um, portable iron. I've used this quite a bit in the field and uh, I, I like it, it's a reasonable performer. Um, so that's what I was doing. My expectations were set as this is a portable iron and this was a bench iron. And when it comes down to it, uh, this one, I'll put up the screenshot of uh, some issues that I had at the end of the video here, um, but I'll go through the uh, list that I uh, put in my uh, comment before. Okay, this one has a bad stand, okay? I just, I don't like this stand at all. And I'm comparing this with other bench stands. I'm not, and people said, oh, uh, but this one at least has brass wool. This one's got nothing. Well, I was comparing this stand here, which is actually quite good for a portable 
soldering iron. I had different expectations for the stand like I had with uh, this one here. I pointed out that it would have been nice maybe if they had uh, sold like an optional um, bench stand for it. That would have been really cool. Who knows? They might do that in the future. But this one here is a bench soldering iron. I don't like it. It doesn't come with a sponge. This rubber thing is dicky. It, it just doesn't know. No, I think it fails as a stand. Now the next issue is about the live display here. This one does not have a live display at all. This one actually does have a live display. It just due to some thermal PID issues, loop issues or whatever, it, it lags behind the, uh, you know, what the tip's actually doing, I think. So, you know, it's, it's not a fail, but it's better than this. This one does actually have a live display and it will almost certainly improve in future firmware revisions. Now that's the other thing. People are talking about the pine saw, they're talking about the TS-100 and, you know, various uh, portable irons like this. Well, if memory serves me correctly, <laughs> leave it in the comments down below if I'm wrong, but both of those irons had PID thermal uh, control issues when they were released. And I think the TS-100, even people got so fed up with it that they actually wrote their own custom firmware for it to fix it. Um, so, yeah, okay. So, yes, I expect iFixit, uh, being the company that they are, to take feedback on board and actually improve the firmware. So that went into my consideration as well. Yes, out of the box, as it stands right now, it has thermal, uh, you know, like thermal PID loop kind of control issues, perhaps. Now, the other thing was the power display on this thing. I could never get this thing to go like above like half on its uh, display. This one actually does go to the little power display does actually get to 100%. Now, whether or not that's truly delivering the claimed 100 watts, I don't think it is, but at least it's, it's there. It seems to actually operate a bit better than the quick over here. So it, it, it's a win compared to this. The next thing is the setback sensor. This di this does not work at all, at all. The setback sensor in this is very nice. It works very well. Clear win. But remember, what I'm doing at the moment is comparing a portable iron to a bench iron. You shouldn't do that. They're apples and oranges, but I'm just going through the list. When it comes to the selection of tips available, yes, I'm not happy that the iFixit didn't come with higher capacity uh, tips. And I said that multiple times in the video, and well, you either take that on board and you go, well, it doesn't have the tips I need. Um, clearly, rule this out straight away. This is what happens in review videos. If you see something in a review that doesn't meet your requirements being, oh, it's thermal, I was expecting 100 watt thermal capacity, it doesn't deliver. I was expecting to be able to buy large tips, it uh, doesn't deliver that. I was expecting it to be compatible with other uh, tips on the market, uh, like, you know, some Heiko T12s or, you know, some JBC tips or whatever, it doesn't do that. Well, if any of these things in a review you see that doesn't meet your expectations, then you instantly rule it out. It doesn't matter if the reviewer gives it a thumbs up or a thumbs down or whether they like it or they... Uh, if it doesn't meet your requirements, you simply go, well, that's not the iron for me or that's not the multimeter for me or that's not the oscilloscope for me. I thought that was obvious. So speaking of those tips, I expect a bench soldering iron to have a much better range of tips available. Not just these little piddly things that, are, you know, will be fine for, you know, soldering like a little mobile phone repair or uh, something like that, which is, by the way, I think it's probably the primary market uh, for the portable eye fix it here. Those who have to, um, you know, fix phones or other little gadgets on the uh, go or they're moving it around all the time or something like that. But I have more expectations for the tips on a bench soldering iron than I do for a portable soldering iron. Once again, your mileage may vary. For example, if you're into like RC hobby stuff and you've got to fix uh, those sort of things out in the field, you might want like a big ass fat, you know, gigantic high capacity tip like uh, this one that allows you to solder, you know, massive high uh, current capacity bullet connectors and all those uh, sorts of things, right? Big battery uh, connections, huge cables, all that sort of thing. If that's what you need, well, obviously you're not going to get this. <laughs> you're not going to get this. You instantly rule these things out. But my expectations for a bench iron, again, I expect a whole bunch of like weird variety tips available, like these ones, you know, like all sorts of different variety tips. 
like these, right? That's what I expect on a bench iron. This didn't deliver at all. It's a complete failure. Why would you buy into an ecosystem like this, which is what you're buying for a bench iron. You're buying into an ecosystem of tips and thermal capacity and everything else, right? If it doesn't, if, if it only has a range of piddly little tips you can only use for mobile phone repair or whatnot, um, then yeah, I, no, it fails as a bench iron. And to be fair, the fix hub is also going to fail as a portable iron if your requirements are big thermal capacity stuff out in the field. It's clearly not for you, so don't even consider it. And the next thing was this thing with the included uh, tip, the highest capacity tip they had with it, um, it pretty much failed to do some basic stuff. You know, that wasn't even huge uh, capacity stuff. Failed to do some basic soldering tasks um, that I set for it. Whereas this I fix it based on the um, tip that it had. It actually did a decent performance in like the uh, thermal capacity, uh, you know, like the actual repeated thermal capacity test on the ground plane and stuff. It actually met that. Sure, it's not going to do, you know, huge cable connections out in the field. But for what it was uh, designed and marketed for, I think, it actually performed reasonably well. So once again, regardless of price, this is why I gave this benchtop unit a thumbs down. Because it didn't meet my basic expectations for a bench um, soldering station. It just didn't meet it. Whereas the iFixit, I actually like uh, the design of it. I like the concept. And you may not agree, but I actually like the fact that this doesn't have a screen on it. As I said, one of my gripes with uh, these portable ones, and I've used a couple of them, but um, I use the TS-80 mostly, is that I, I just don't like the screen and the buttons on it. I want something, you know, if I'm out in the field doing some quick work, I just want to turn it on and, it, and it to be able to work. This actually does that, and it's different. There's, I don't think there's another portable USB on the, ma iron on the market that does that. Now, once again, I find that kind of an advantage in... My, in my particular circumstances, but your mileage may vary. And if your requirement is to be able to adjust the temperature out in the field on the iron, then this is clearly not the iron for you. But that doesn't make it bad or wrong or a failure. It's just different to other irons on the market. If you need a screen and temperature adjustment at a cheap price, <laughs> Don't buy this, clearly. And I like the fact that this thing uh, came with the schematics, it comes with the full repair guide for it. And yes, it comes from a company that I like, but I also like Quick as well. Um, it's just that this iron, I, I couldn't find a reason why I would use this over any, even my 30 year old Heiko 926, I would prefer to this thing any day of the week. So this is not going to replace any other, you know, I've got some decent um, bench irons here, but even some crappy old ones, like I've got my old Heiko 926 down in the bunker, I'm not going to be replacing it with this. Nah, like my old 30 year old, what is it, 35? Might even be 40 year old Heiko 926 better than this thing. That's why I gave it a thumbs down, but this thing, I'm actually going to use this, um, this, maybe just the iron on its own, I don't know if I'd take the battery uh, pack or not, but it's going to replace my TS-80, because I like this better thermally and um, just from a construction and interface uh, point of view than my TS-80. You may not agree, but that's my personal opinion. So if I generally like this and I'm going to use it myself, why wouldn't I give it a thumbs up? That's why I gave it a thumbs up. But that doesn't mean you should rush out and buy this thing, and it doesn't mean that it's the best value on the market. In fact, I said multiple times in the video that this is expensive, and this is not going to win any bang per buck awards, because my video was a review video of this. It was not a shootout video. Because if it was a shootout video between various portable soldering irons, None of this bench rubbish, portable soldering irons, then this one, the iFixit, wouldn't win because clearly it's not even close in the bang per buck category compared to other irons. It uh, uh, almost certainly doesn't have the thermal capacity of other irons available. It doesn't uh, use uh, compatible tips like some of the other uh, ones out there. They actually use industry uh, compatible uh, tips. So yes, it's not going to win a shootout. And in a shootout comparison video, my expectations are different. I'm thinking more towards what uh, the general user might want, and I'm trying to compare them 
for you know a general use scenario or various usage uh, scenarios, right? So um, yes, I would say well if you're if you hate the buttons in the screen on the uh, iron like I did, then well this thing's the only one on the market, so you might choose this. So it might win that subcategory of. Uh, you know, a shootout video just by being different. But a dedicated review video is actually quite different. I'm thinking, well, do I personally like this thing and would I personally use it? And the answer is, and if the answer to that is yes, which it is, um, then I'm going to give it a thumbs up, unless there's something other drastically um, that, you know, would make me give it a uh, thumbs down. And bang per buck is not one of them. If that was the case, then every multimeter, every high, every expensive multimeter I ever reviewed, every expensive uh, oscilloscope I ever reviewed, any expensive anything else that I ever reviewed, pair of pliers or whatever, um, it, like it's clearly not going to win a bang per buck shootout. But that's not something that would drive me to give it a thumbs down because it's an individual review video. It's not. A shootout. So once again, the claim from uh, American Locomotive and several other commenters was that, oh, I glossed over the thermal performance of this thing. I, <laughs> huh? I don't quite get it. Um, watch the video again. Probably what a quarter or a third of the video is me showing you how this doesn't actually meet its thermal capacity. Um, so yeah, I don't know how anyone can claim that I'm being biased or a shill or anything like that when I spend significant parts of the video um, showing you uh, issues that I found and in particular uh, the thermal capacity. Now yes, I totally agree that uh, the marketing at iFixit um, should not have, I think you can see that, should not have the 100 watts stamped on there because this is clearly not capable of delivering 100 watts into uh, the tip based on the USB meter that I had plugged into there. Now I've since tried um, several other USB meters and I get a similar result. So uh, you know whether or not it's an ADC sample rate in, inside the um, USB uh, you know power meter thing, I, 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 I don't think so. This thing seems like unable to deliver the 100 watts. And Kyle from iFixit even said uh, yeah um, this uh, the particular tip which they supplied to me this uh, small bevel one um, actually has uh, trouble um, putting 100 watts into uh, the tip. I, mean, I think it has more than trouble. It doesn't, it, you know, it doesn't make it. Maybe 50 watts or something like that, uh, peak, um, possibly. You know, it, it, it actually takes a lot of effort to do proper measurements on that uh, sort of thing. So, um, yeah, so clearly their marketing is out to lunch there um, in terms of like the 100 watt capability. Don't believe it. And they should definitely be called out for that. And I thought that by me showing that multiple times in the video was enough calling out. But no, apparently some people want me to shout and scream from the heavens that, oh no, this thing sucks, oh, it's awful, uh, thumbs down, blah, 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 blah. No, because I think that they will eventually come out with some better um, thermal uh, tips for this thing. They will tweak the PID uh, controls and stuff and, and maybe they can get, they can tweak better thermal uh, performance out of this thing like the 100 watt power delivery is uh, capable of this thing. And you can say, well, why didn't I say the same thing about this? Is because this is a bench iron. I have different expectations for a bench iron. Uh, once again, if you if you do review videos and you want to do it different, you you would have you have a different opinion. That's fine. But that's the way that I do repair videos. Now there's another thing I want to actually apologise to uh, I fix it for this. I I was a, a bit hasty in uh, talking about the pin length here. Clear look. Look where the, this is fully inside the case, okay? The, 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 those pins which I've cut down that are, um, you know, I complain that they might be too close uh, to the case and if you get any solder dags then that could uh, cause a problem. Um, it's not going to be a problem because it's with inside the plastic end enclosure like that. The only way it would be a problem is, as I um, mentioned in the video, is if you keep the physical uh, battery terminal connected and then try and pull it out. Um, at the same time, then you might have an issue shorting on the case like I did. But that is not the way that you're supposed to take this thing apart or put it back together. So that was stupidly me trying to force, actually putting the battery in there and trying to force it back in. That's the only time that those pins become a uh, problem. Uh, whereas in normal operation, no, it's not a safety problem at all. So I'd like to apologise to iFixit uh, for that. I was, um, I didn't realise that uh, at the time, but 
Yeah, with hindsight, that's really obvious. So there you go, I've waffled on enough. Hopefully uh, that explains why I gave this a thumbs down and this a thumbs up. It comes down to expectations and whether or not I'm actually going to use the thing and whether or not I like uh, the design and how they've executed it and the potential uh, future of it. Now, uh, by all means, the quick, they might come out and they might fix, uh, they might come out with a whole different range of tips and they might fix the thermal uh, capacity issue. And in that case, I'll reevaluate it and I might give it a thumbs up. But no, that got a thumbs down because it didn't meet my basic requirements for a bench iron. Whereas this meets my personal basic requirements for a portable soldering iron. But as always, your mileage may vary. If any of the things look like a showstopper in the review, then you clearly don't buy this thing. So yeah, I think it's a bit weird that I have to explain that, but um, yeah, don't take any reviewers like thumbs up or thumbs down or, you know, this gets my seal of approval and this one uh, doesn't. Don't take that for granted. This might meet your requirements for 80 bucks, right? It's really cheap. And if you're only doing mobile phone, you know, little tiny thermal mass stuff, it might actually be really good for you. So don't take my thumbs down as like, oh god, you know, I shouldn't touch that thing. Um, and likewise, <laughs> me giving this a thumbs up doesn't mean that you should immediately rush out and buy it without considering whether or not it's suitable for your requirements in terms of price point, in terms of thermal capacity, in terms of tip compatibility, in terms of uh, user um, interface for uh, changing the temperature for just the iron. Um, yes, this thing is crazy expensive for the battery pack. This this iron at uh, 80 bucks, yeah, it's expensive compared to other uh, USB irons, but it's not you know <laughs> as expensive a margin as uh, the battery um, here is. So eh, anyway. Enough of that. So anyway, leave your thoughts and comments down below. Once again, if you want to disagree completely, then that's fine. I'm just trying to explain myself where I come from when I do individual reviews like this and when I do shootouts and how this wasn't a shootout. Okay, I just wanted to show you um, some extra uh, thermal uh, capacity testing. In this particular case, AC main side uh, testing for uh, the Quick TS11, the JBC and the uh, Pace, just to show you um, how the uh, Quick TS11 which is here, and it has the highest capacity thermal tip that it actually uh, comes with, right? We've got a, a big um, uh, angled uh, chisel here. So let's actually whack this in. You can see, right? So this is the AC main side, but the internal circuitry doesn't take much at all, okay? And there's a bit of inefficiency. So, you know, it's not the actual power delivered exactly to tip, but, you know, it's close enough. So let's, let's dip this in. This is an 80 watt iron, okay? Oh, it peaked at 57 there. Peaked at... Yeah, 55, something like that. Not terrific, is it? If I submerge the whole tip, 60, right? It's, it's, it's just not getting there. It's, it's not getting there at all, okay? That's why the quick TS-11 failed in its um, thermal capacity test. It's just not there. Now, here's my JBC iron, which is nominally 130 watts, by the way. So that's why when you saw it in the iFixit uh, video, when I was comparing that, I was comparing a, well, a, a rated iFixit of 100 watts, which it's not, um, compared to a 130 watt um, JBC 2, uh, I think it's the 2BB iron uh, that I've got. And of course, JBC are famous for, you know, really good performance uh, tips and soldering systems, right? They really know uh, how to design and do it, right? So we're talking about a 130 watt iron here. So we just put the tip in, okay, little conical. Whoa, look at that. Hang on. Whoa, 170! Look at that, it's peaking, right? It's got a peak power capability well above, it's going over range there, right? It's going over like 200 watts or whatever it is. So this has way more than its rated a capacity of 130 watts in terms of peak energy, and it can deliver that right into the tip, right into the tip a little conical tip like that. So this is why, like, it's just no contest in terms of, like, you wouldn't expect it, right? They're not the same price category, of course, but the uh, Quick didn't, couldn't even deliver any, like, peak power into the tip, whereas it's common for soldering stations to deliver peak power. Now for my Pace ADS 200 uh, bench iron, 120 watt uh, nominal uh, capability, a little tiny uh, conical tip, in fact the smallest tip uh, that I've got for this thing, and this is available and this is available in higher capacity tips, physically wider, as I showed in my previous video. So just the tip, ma'am. Let's put it in. There you go. You're getting yeah, it peaked at the 120, yeah, 120 watts there. 
there you go. So it seems like like cyclic kind of thing, but yeah, it's it's delivering that 120 watts with just the tip. So you can see why I rated that uh, TS11 quite low, and that was the best thermal capacity tip that they have in their entire range. And again, another test with this. Uh, by the way, it gives me a cable error, so um, yeah, uh, maybe there's no data, doesn't have proper data comms in this uh, cable, I don't know, I haven't tested it, but uh, it does, it does deliver the uh, power, so there's no problems there. So it's just the tip. Just the tip. Yeah, what was that? 30? What? Oh, 36? You go 18, 30 watts, 35, 38. Yep. Yeah, yeah, can't do it. Here's another power meter. Oh no, it like the cable, it, it works this time. So I'm not sure what the deal is there. Um uh, same cable. Anyway, um this seems to have faster updating. So let's go. Once again, yeah, 35, 40, 40 watts. 40 watts maybe. So yeah. Yeah, we're, we're just not getting that 100 watts delivered into the tip. So, yeah, for, I'm measuring about 40. I think we might have seen a peak of 50 in the previous uh, video, did we? And another one here, if you look down the bottom there, 8, 10 watts, 32, 60, 42, there, 50, 50. I'm sure I saw 50 there. So maybe it can peak at 50. So, uh, yeah, marketing need to revise their, uh, unless they can get a higher capacity, uh, thermal capacity tip and or improve the uh, PID uh, performance inside this thing, then yeah, they can't claim that this is a 100 watt capacity tip um, as marked on the actual tip. So, uh, yeah, yeah, nah.